Hi, my name is Diego Perez, and I'm a software engineer on the Android Studio team. Today, I'm going to talk about what's new in the Compose design tools. The Compose tooling is currently available in the Canary release of Android Studio, and you can download it from this link. We are working in some exciting tooling for Jetpack Compose, but today I'm going to show you the Compose layout preview. The preview is already available, and you can try it out today. This preview allows you to see multiple individual composables side by side. You can apply different data configurations and see how they react to these changes. So I'm going to quickly show you how to navigate the layout preview. Then we are going to see a couple of features that allow you to interact with the components from within Studio so you can test how they react to interactions. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to use sample data to put some information within your components and see uh, the design in context. So here I have a simple composable that I want to preview. So this composable takes one parameter with some data that actually uh, it uses to populate the UI. So let's see how we can do that. The first thing that we need to do is to create a composable function. I'm going to call mine postcard preview, but you can call it whatever you want. Then I'm going to apply a theme because this component requires a theme. And then I'm going to set to post one. Post one is just a data class that I created with some sample data. Um, just to basically see it in the preview. You may need to do this in some cases, like for example, if your component requires network access, the preview doesn't allow that. So you may need to pass the information to the component. So this is one way to do it. Okay, so I have defined my preview. Now I just need to tell Studio that this is a preview. So the way to do that is just by doing a preview. So this will pop up the preview panel on the right. Uh, you may need to build before actually seeing the preview, in my case, because I have built before, that is why it's there, but I can build anyway, just to make sure that I'm displaying the right thing. Yeah, so that looks fine. If you are familiar with the layout editor, uh, you probably have seen this layout before. So again, it's a split panel, you can resize. You can click code on the top right corner if you don't want to see the preview at all. You can click design if you want to see something in detail or full screen. But today I'm going to use the split mode because I want to see the code next to what is generating. If I hover over the preview, you see that the boundaries of every component um, are painted. So I can click in one of them and it will take me within the current file to where that element was generated. In this case, I clicked and you can see that is the author and read time. If I click here, you'll see that is the bookmark button. If I double click, it will take me to where in my project this element was generated. So let's see, if I double click, now it took me to this icon that is contained within the bookmark button. So you see that this is a very easy way to navigate your project and see where things in your preview were generated. Now let's look into this toolbar next to the preview. So there are two buttons. One of them is what we call interactive preview. If I call, if I click it, it will switch mode. Uh, so you can see by a different background. And now there are no lines of the boundaries anymore. And the reason is now I can interact with my component. So if I click here, my bookmark button will be enabled. So this is running the code in the preview. So this is a very fast way to get quick feedback of how my uh, component is behaving. Once I don't want to do that, or if I want to navigate again in the source code, I can click stop preview and I'm back to the regular mode. The other one allows me to deploy this component on a device if I have one connected to my computer or in an emulator. In my case, I don't have any device connected to my computer. So if I click it, it will pop up the emulator and it will start this component in there. So you see that is starting the activity. And now it displays. And again, I can click and preview how it works. But I'm not going to use the emulator today, so I'm going to close it. OK, so we have covered the surface. Now, another interesting thing is we can customize the surface to uh, make the preview work in different ways for us. So one very simple customization is to pass parameters. So the preview annotation has many parameters. I'm not going to cover all of them, uh, but I'm going to show you some of them. So in this case, I'm going to call this post preview because we are previewing posts. A useful parameter is, for example, the width. I can change the width of the preview, so I can set it to something very large and see how my component looks, or I can set it to something very narrow and see how my component reacts. So I can quickly know that for that width, this component is not going to behave very well. Let's remove it for now. Another useful thing is I can have multiple annotations in one component. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this large. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the width to something more reasonable, but still wider. So now you see, I see side by side how my component reacts to these two different widths. Another very useful parameter is show decoration. If I set it to true, 
then it will display this component in the context of an activity. So if this component is using an activity, this is a very quick way to see it in context and see how it looks. This is particularly powerful when combined with the device. So if you use the device parameter, then I can say to, for example, Nexus 10. Now I can see how it looks in this device. And you can have multiple annotations, again, with multiple devices and multiple widths. So it's very easy to see your component in one view in multiple configurations. So let's remove this again for now. So this is one way of customizing the preview. There is another way, which is, well, I could have more previews. So I could copy this and let's remove this. And let's call this theme preview. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pass a theme to the theme preview. So for example, it takes a colors argument and I can do dark theme colors. If I click the refresh button, once it refreshes, I will have three previews, two from the top postcard preview and then one with the theme. So you see it there. So now we have the dark preview and the light previews. So this is a good opportunity to show another useful parameter, which is called group. So for example, in here, I can do theme and here I can do devices. So once I do that, you see that there is a list at the top. So this is a way that if in one file you have multiple previews, you can group them. And here I have my previews for different devices. And in here, I could have more than one preview for different themes. So it's another way of classifying them and keep them a little bit um, in order. So now we have copied the preview. We have used the preview parameter. But the problem is if I want to generate multiple of them, it seems that I'm going to end up with a lot of copies of the preview um, parameter with just smaller changes. So it would be nice if there was another way of customizing this and set it with different properties. So I'm going to comment this one for now. And wouldn't it be nice if we could, for example, pass the theme here and the theme was like a parameter. So this was the color palette theme. This would be really nice. But the problem is if I look here, then it says that I cannot do that because a preview doesn't take any parameters that are non-default or that are notated with that preview parameter. So let's use this add preview parameter annotation. So what this allows is to specify a provider that basically will populate this parameter. So I'm going to have a theme uh, provider, for example, and I'm going to create it here. What is a theme provider? Very simple. It's just any class that inherits from preview parameter provider. Then I need to do color palette as a type and that's it. I just need to implement the method, in this case, values. So values is just a sequence. And what it does is the preview will be rendered with the sequence of parameters that I pass here. So I only have two themes in my application right now. So what I'm going to do is light theme colors and dark theme colors. OK, let me press refresh. And once it finishes, it will display in one preview, it will display it in both contexts. And you can pass anything that you want in this parameter, so you can customize it. So uh, for example, I'm going to do another example with this one that I had uh, before. So let me uncomment this. And what I'm going to do is the same thing, but I'm going to, instead of passing a theme, I'm going to pass a post. And what I'm going to have is preview parameter, and then the provider is going to call be called post provider. OK, so because this is a very common use case, we have a small utility class. Uh, so if you have a post provider that is called collection preview parameter, and then it's very similar to what you've done before, but you can use any collection. So in here, what I'm going to do is post and then list of, and then I'm going to say post one, post two, post three. So I have three posts and two different preview notations. So if I refresh, this is going to generate six different previews. We are going to see that if we click devices, we are going to have six. So we have the three different posts. Oh, see this, I need to pass the post. If not, you see that on the right side, everything is populated with the same information. So if I click refresh now, now much better. So I have with the uh, narrower width, um, I have the three posts, and then with the large width, I have the other three posts. So again, very easy. Now I have like my preview populated with a lot of information that I can see in one go. Um, so as I said, uh, 
for now, you can only pass one preview parameter, but that shouldn't be a very big limitation. So let's see how we can work around that. So I did it very quickly. So let's do this one. Let's change it. And what we are going to do is, what if we could do something like theme and post? And then instead of this, we receive a pair of the theme and then the post. This will be really nice. And then you could extend this to basically do anything that you want. And then in here, first, second. So this will be really nice. So let's create like a theme and post provider. So I'm going to cheat a little bit here because I have uh, written a little bit of code before, but you'll see that it's very simple. So I created this preview parameter combiner and you can imagine it takes two uh, things or so two types. And what it does is what it says, it just combines these two. So what I'm going to do is uh, as first parameter, I'm going to pass my theme provider I created before, and then it takes a pair provider, the second, and that's it. There is nothing else to do. Um, and then what I'm going to do is to rebuild. And you see, we have generated all the combinations of the different um, post with the different themes. So it's very simple. And I'm going to show you the code to do this. It's not complicated. Uh, so this is just a regular preview parameter provider where we have the values. And what this does, it, it generates the combinations of the two providers. So you can see how this is a very simple but, but extensible API. So you can very quickly customize it in any way that you want. So that's everything that I wanted to show you today. I hope that you like the preview and uh, we are always iterating on it. So please keep an eye on it and uh, please send us your feedback. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.